Some people cannot handle cheese, and for them, I am sorry. Because today, I'm reviewing To the Ends of Time, a sumptuous fantasy film made in 1996. Now, I say fantasy, but more specifically, it's a, I'll call it a fairy tale epic. Meaning that it's not so much about grounded world building or killing hordes of bad guys, and more about a heroic journey. Much like Beauty and the Beasts, the Disney animated film, doesn't spend a lot of time establishing its setting of medieval France in detail, and instead focuses on the characters and story, to the ends of time creates a remarkable setting, but won't explain all of its implications, very deliberately, I think. Now, when I say a remarkable setting, just watch the first few minutes and you'll see what I mean. The movie opens with a fleet of airships, that is, galleons flying through the sky, which proceed to attack a castle that's bristling with fantastic Leonardo da Vinci-styled defenses, from arrow gatling guns to focused beams of light. Holy smokes. And this gets to one of the problems that I think some people are going to have with this film. The airships are definitely models. Duh. This was released in 1996. There was no reasonable CGI for this stuff. Some people are going to lean back and point and laugh and say, those are clearly models. These people are missing the point. So what if you can tell they're models? It's like pointing out that Gollum is CGI. We know. So, you need to be able to sit back and not pick apart the special effects. In my opinion, they're, they're quite effective for what they're trying to get across, and you've got to kind of get into that mindset. Anyway, let me get off that little soapbox now and talk about the characters. As a fairy tale epic, the characters do fall into well-known tropes. The young hero, the sheltered princess, the wise but troubled king, the bearded mystic, you get it. But that's not a complaint. You can't innovate everywhere all at once, or the audience will get completely lost. <clears throat> the key lies in how those characters are treated in the story, and how well the actors bring life to those roles, whether you believe it. The story, to my surprise, was pretty tight. A lot of uh, fantasy, films, fan fantasy films meander quite a bit. With the characters, you know, they'll wander into a swamp and fight a swamp monster. And then they'll get into the hills and fight a hill monster and so forth. Not so this film. Uh, it clearly establishes the factions early in the film. And the plot progresses logically from the actions and reactions of the characters in those factions. It also has an interesting twist on the classic Save the World plot, which deals with time itself. But I won't spoil that for you. I'm trying to keep this... Spoiler free. There are some brief diversions, and that gets into another important detail. The film's creator has stated that he wanted this to be a family-friendly film. Now, don't assume from that that this is all rainbows and unicorns and you know, people parachuting out of explosions. There are explosions and bloody dead bodies in this film. But in trying to appeal to a wide variety of ages, the movie adds a lot of comedic asides. Some of these work well, but sometimes they're just pratfalls or gags, particularly those having to do with this one funny chef sidekick. Fortunately, these are generally brief, and the movie continues on from there. Now let's get back to the characters and talk about the acting. This varies wildly. The king and his daughter are well played, uh, both expressing a wide range of emotions. I was quite impressed there. The two kids, on the other hand, are, well, atrocious. They seem to be trying, but there's just absolutely no depth to their performances. Thankfully, they're not in the film for too much of its running time, so you can just kind of sit through that. Overall, if I said there's a 90s epic fantasy film featuring airship fleets and a quest involving the manipulation of time, and that excites and intrigues you, you will probably get a huge kick out of this flick. If not, you'll need to suspend your disbelief and push through some cringeworthy acting to enjoy a truly remarkable fantasy film.